Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy, DJ Troy. I'm coming to you live from the 22nd Annual Sports Ball, celebrating the Artash Institute for Urban Health. We're here to talk about all the issues that are affecting black men and many generations of women, many generations of men. So what we're trying to do is that we're going to be going around talking to the local celebrities and local artists that come to these events. So stick with us tonight, and we're going to have a blast. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is your boy, DJ Troy, in the building. And I'm at the Arthur Ashe Institute's 22nd Sports Ball. And here I have up-and-coming artist, Mr. B-Notes, um, local celebrity, soon-to-be international celebrity. Um, B-Notes, can you tell me what the sports ball means to you? Well, I mean, you know, Arthur Ashe is a legend. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, sports ball is celebrating what he started and the legacy that the Institute has continued. So it's, it's, it's a good, dope thing. It's a dope event to be together to, you know, acknowledge the great work that the Institute is doing. So there's been a lot of talk this recently about all the health issues that have been affecting, you know, black men and black women all over the world. And as you should know by now, there's a lot of health issues that specifically affects black people. In your years of doing health work, um, what do you feel is the best way to stay healthy? Well, I think education is important, knowing the to do's, the do's and not to do's, you know, but also, you know, resources. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not by coincidence that a lot of issues impact the black community. When you look at the resources that we have, we are we have limited access to a lot of things, whether it's healthcare, education, or employment. So, based on the amount of money someone make, it will have an impact or a different. It will make a difference in their health outcome. So, absolutely, I think you know, we can't just say the individual got to do better and do better. We also have to look at the bigger picture of opportunities and and um, employment and resources and etc. You know. Cool, man. Um. Now, let's talk about your music. Um, recently, you dropped a great mixtape. You know, I've, it's been on my playlist. You know, I'm loving it. Um, what, what, what are you doing next? Um, what's going on? What's happening next? Well, actually, I just got back in the studio, so I'm working on the record. I'm also working on a documentary right now for Haiti. You know, as you have heard, the earthquake, not the earthquake, um, the hurricane. But we are still recovering from the earthquake from um, 2010. Um, so now, most recently, the hurricane has devastated a, a big part of the country. So I'm going to do some work to basically help rebuild in, 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 you know, in any capacity that I can. So really, that's my main focus right now because that's the current emergency that we're dealing with. So. so for anybody that's out there that wants to help Haiti during this um, hurricane situation and also the Haiti is still recovering, from, you know, that incredible situation that happened in 2010, what do you think is the best way they could help Haiti? Because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, all the mismanagement of the billions of dollars that came to Haiti. What do you feel that, you know, people could do in order to help Haiti and make sure that their money gets to where it needs to go? Well, I mean, you know, that's a, a bit complex of a question, but I think finding out, speak to the people themselves to find out what they need instead of us assuming what they need. And I think if you can't go on the ground and do it yourself, man, that's really the best way. You know what I mean? You cut out the middleman. So um, that's what I would say to people. Cut out the middleman. If you can't go on the ground, go on the ground. If you want to work with an organization, you can reach out to organizations that are research. You must do your research to make sure whoever you are contributing money to that there are people that are going to use your funds for the cause that you want it to be used for. So you got to do your research, you know what I mean? So that's what I would say. I 100% agree. And my final question for you, B-Notes, um, I know you've been working on some movies. I know you say you, you, you have your documentary. Um, you know, w when can we see some of these things? When do we expect to see some of these things? Give us a... a I'm sorry, absolutely first quarter next year. Okay. We'll have a lot of stuff out. Okay. 
absolutely by then. Okay, so tune into my website. You heard, you heard my man here. Next year, okay, first quarter. That means that the first three months of 2017, we're coming serious, okay, serious. So, B notes. Can you tell folks how they could get to you if they want your music? If you know they would like to, you know, have you on their shows, you know. Tell them where they can find you. Simple, man. B Notes Music. B N O T E S M U S I C. B Notes Music. Um, that's my Instagram. That's my Twitter. That's my Snapchat. So, B Notes Music. Just DM me and I'll be in touch with y'all. That's it. Simple. Thank you, B Notes. Thank you for your time. Okay, boss? All right. Sapase. Mabule. Yes, my man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce yourself to my audience. Um, let them know what is it that you do for the Orthash Institute. Well, um, we, my name is Johnny Trezel, and I have been working for the Institute for five years, where we work in the um, Barbershop Talk with Brothers, is the outreach community. So basically, we go and meet with different CBOs in the community, where we go ahead and talk to them about the health-related issues that are very dramatic to our people in the neighborhood. Um, again, so it's a great program that we have a good outcome and we, are, we want to keep on doing that so that we can help our youth, most likely the black men in, in, the, in central Brooklyn. Yeah. So now, um, can you tell me, um, I asked B Notes that question, you know, as an individual in health, okay, what is it that you think that people could do best to take care of their health? Um, the best thing to take care of your health is to know that your health is important to you. If you do not know that, no matter what angle we're trying to help, to intervene is not going to do anything for you. First of all, you need to be aware of how your health is important and what's going on in your neighborhood and to make drastic and important decisions towards your life. Okay, so now you being of Haitian descent... Um, you know, I know you personally and, you know, we have a lot of conversations about the Haiti earthquake. We have a lot of conversation about, you know, the flood that just passed through. Um, in order, you know, and it's, it's a very difficult and complex issue, okay? But can you give me, in, you know, simple terms, what is it that you think that we could do to help Haiti during this crisis? Um, yes, uh, my, my brother, let me just recap for you. I was born and grew up in, the, in Haiti where all these things are happening. I grew up there. I know the streets and I know the corners and I know the, the people that are living there. That's something very personal um, for me and for my family that I still have, um, who live still um, in Haiti somewhere in the south and in the center where Port-au-Prince is actually. Um, this is a very important question because every day you see, you see different organizations, different tons of monies are being delivered to, to Haiti. But um, the question is how, why is Haiti still in the bottom line? Why, why Haiti is still turn, part of the problem? And of course, um, this is a problem we as Haitians, we need to start um, take it a little bit more seriously because we do know that in order for Haiti to, to move on to another step in the ladder, and we as Haitians, we need to reunite it together when somebody comes to help, and so that we will be at the center of the conversation and we'll tell them what exactly we would need them to do for us in order for us to make a change. Because remember, as politics move on, everybody, every institution, every nonprofit, that try to help you, they always would want you to be in the same problems in order for them tomorrow to come again. Now, to answer your question, we as Haitians, we need to come together to make, um, a, to, to, to unite ourselves. And when that happens, we will be able to strategize our solutions. And that's the unique way for us as Haitians to move forward towards these problems. Thank you, thank you. Um, me, myself, um, you know, as a lot of you folks might know, um, I have a great love for Haiti, and, you know, I think it's a wonderful culture. 
And, you know, I am covering the Arthur Ashe sports ball, but I just want to use this platform to just remind folks out there that where, wherever you decide to donate your money for Haiti, just make sure that it's a reputable organization, that it's um, an organization that is able to get the money to the people that's actually going to do something. Okay. Recently, I watched this um, documentary that people are taking the money to build stadiums when people don't have running water. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. My it does. Brother, let me say that this. This is make any sense once the basic life are not made. You need to get the basic life in order for you to function. If you don't have the basic, the clean waters, the, if you don't have a, a, a shelter, that's the bottom line. If you cannot think about luxury if you don't have the basic in life. So now, as my um, today is the sport ball event where I'm proud to be part of, and it's represent a very important thing for me because we, I am able to see how people comes together to donate, to comes together to do different things, to to be a game changer, and that's what we need in our community when we come together to invite people. And like you said, whoever wants to donate, whoever wants to give to contribute in the future of Haiti. We want you guys to make, to, to do it with your heart and to give um, the institutions that you think and you know who's gonna make a change, not for those of them who wants to come and get a, a, a pay cut into the salary that you give. And that's a very important thing for me, Mr. Choi. Thank you. Yeah, and um, you know, the, the, the last thing I'm gonna say about this is that um, there were some documents that was recently released, okay? When the earthquake happened in 2011, what one of the, you know, guys said was let the vultures in, you know? So now you have people who are in a desperate situation, and instead of them helping these people, people are looking to get a pay cut, okay? So this is what I'm saying. If you are going to do something for Haiti, make sure that you do something that actually is going to help the people. Okay? Directly. And uh, of course, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the nonprofit organizations are in Haiti right now. They are trying to keep the problem going because they can, for them to keep on having their pay cut. And this is a political issue. And you got, who's listening and watching the, uh, my brother, my friend Troy um, website now, you need to understand that there is a, a very few of the institutions that's doing the good thing. And before you give, before you donate, try to look and inform yourself first before you donate your money. And that's what I want all of you to know and to understand at this present moment. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Troy, for letting me speak to my people on your channel. Thank you, thank you. And thank you. Thank you for watching. We have more coming up. I'm going to be interviewing the CEO of the Artash Institute, um, a personal fan, friend of mine, um, Dr. Marilyn White. I've known her forever, and um, later on I'll try to get her, you know, so that we could talk about, you know, what is our, new, what is our vision for the Institute in the next 10 years. Exactly. Stay tuned. As you can see, I'm wearing my lovely lab jacket, courtesy of Dr. Valman of the Arthur Ashe Institute. Don, the wonderful Captain Herrera. <laughs> Who is over there? <laughs> hey, I say hello. Hi, this is Catherine. Hi. So um, I graduated from HSA in 2002. And the program has been a tremendous success in general. But for me personally, it has changed my life because I'm able to go into different circumstances and able to talk about health issues, talk about the body org organs. Basically, it changed my life. I know how to eat better. It's a, it's a long story. But Dr. Valman, can you tell me um, in your own words, what is the HSA program? Well, the Health Science Academy is a STEM health science pipeline. We serve students grades 6 to 12, and we also serve beyond that uh, our alumni who are in college, graduate school, and professionals. We are located at SUNY Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, 
and this year we're serving about 240 students, but since we began September 1994, we have served over 2,000 students, both high school and middle school. Wow. So um, since this is a fundraiser for the HSA, a fundraiser for the Arthur Ashe Institute for Urban Health, um, for my viewers that's watching, what can they do in order to support both the HSA and the Orthash Institute for Urban Health? Well, in terms of financially, of course, we will not turn down financial contributions. Um, we partner with 11 high schools in Brooklyn, so we're always looking for uh, high school freshmen who are interested in the health science background. We even take some students who are not at our high school. So parents and students who are interested in health science, it's a three-year program. It's rigorous at the high school level. It's college level anatomy and physiology. Check out our website, authorashinstitute.org, if you have a freshman interested in applying. Um, otherwise, we accept all donations, and we also need volunteers of certain skill sets. We need instructors, we need people with administrative skills. We have many ways that you can contribute. Finally, um, this is a question that I always ask um, my Arthur Ashe Institute for Urban Health colleagues. Okay, but this is specifically for your section. Where do you see the HSA in the next 10 years? Um, well, what we're planning now is possibly to expand right now the Health Science Academy, the high school component, targets college-bound students who have an 85 average and 85 in math and science. We would like to start serving more students at the high school level, um, students who may be going into community college and a health science career, and we would like to do a lot more for our alumni, such as you, um, but keep in better touch with them and be able to provide them with more uh, opportunities for internships and, 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 and funding. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for your time, Dr. Pamela. And I'm here with the one and only Shefik. Tonight was actually the first time that I met this gentleman, but after hearing about him and reading about his resume, I have a few questions because many a times in my inbox, people ask me questions about how is it that you get into hosting? How is it that you, you know, get on television and radio and these things? So I'm gonna ask Shefik a couple of questions that might probably be able to help one of my viewers, okay? Okay, so Shafik, for those, for my viewers actually, who, do, who may not know you, can you tell me who you are, where can we find you, and what you've been doing for the past 10 years? I don't need to know everything. <laughs> right, I understand. All right, so basically, uh, I currently host, I'm the executive producer and host of a syndicated radio show. It's called Invocation. It's currently on 22 radio stations around the country. Um, and right now, I'm basically working on that, and I also have a, a distribution deal for video that goes through FUBU. If you remember FUBU, the apparel company, they actually started a new uh, TV division. So I have uh, syndication and distribution through those outlets. So, wow. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Shafiq, for anyone who is um, thinking about getting into hosting, okay, whether it might be on the radio or whether it might be, you know, a television program, what's some advice that you would give to that person? Well, certainly for myself, you know, with, when I started Invocation, I was being truthful to my own story. So the concept of the show is that for every uh, episode, I focus on one particular topic, and then based on that one topic, I let the guests talk about the average two to three minutes on what's meaningful to them. So something inspirational, something that's, you know, meaningful to have an impact. So that's the takeaway for everybody else, to do something that's meaningful, something impactful, something that's going to make a difference to sort of create your own legacy doing that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, um, f finally, um, what plans do you have for the future? Okay, because I just met you, okay, and, you know, some of the things that you have been telling me is very amazing. Um, but, you know, you know, Kevin Hart recently came out with a movie, What Now? And the concept behind that is basically saying that you have done all these things, you know? So what now? What is it that you expect and hope to do in, like, say, the next two to five years? Well, definitely grow the fan base and audience of the, of the radio show itself. Um, some of the people I've had on the show already are people like Dionne Warwick's been on there, Melba Moore, um, the Crown Prince of Italy has been on there. Um, people like Sarah Dash is coming up. 
um, a lot of people. Um, so be on the lookout for that. You can go to invocation.co is the website, um, and you could tune in. Um, basically, if you go to the website, you could tune in and get the schedule. You know, for the 22 stations around the country. Yep. And for all of your loyal fans, um, what do you have to say to them? <laughs> I say everything that I say um, at the end of every episode is that the journey continues right here and everywhere. <laughs> thank you, Shefik. I wish you nothing but the best, man. All right? Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to interview Dr. Marilyn Frazier, who is the leader of the Artash Institute for Urban Health. I have admired this woman for the past how many years? I've known her since I was 17 years of age, and I've seen her grown from being a regular employee to the leader of the Artash Institute for Urban Health. So, Dr. White, can you tell me what is the Artash Institute for Urban Health for those who do not know what it is? So the Arthur Ashe Institute for Urban Health is a nonprofit organization. It's a community-based organization that was founded by Arthur Ashe just two months before he passed away. And it was founded at SUNY Downstate Medical Center. And the institute conducts health disparities uh, work in, in, in various communities. So we, we conduct health disparities, health promotion, uh, work in non-traditional settings, in beauty salons and barbershops. We also have a health science academy which is geared towards increasing people of color in the health professions. And it's a three-year program, and it's a three-year after-school science enrichment program for those that are interested in the health professions. And a lot of the work that we do centers around reducing health inequities and reducing health disparities. Okay, and one thing that you mentioned just now that's uh, close to my heart is health disparities. Um, it, all the years of the Institute actually being active in the community, what is the number one problem you see facing um, African Americans? So it, that's hard. That's a hard question, Troy, because I think there are so many different factors that plays into health disparities. I think access to care is a big issue. I think that access to services, uh, access to um, a, a lot of things within the community, th those are, are big issues that are facing people. I think we don't pay much attention to prevention, and uh, we are we keep on managing things when they're at a chronic state and we don't put enough resources into prevention or preventative measures. And so at the Institute, what we do is making sure that people know what those things are, what the little steps that they can take to help prevent illnesses when they're full blown. So even having people know about diet and exercise and how to exercise regular every day, um, those things are important. But access to care is a big issue. Access to care. So we are at the Artash Institute for Urban Health 22nd yeah, yeah. and gala, black tie and sneaker gala. Um, for those people who are watching, who would like to support us? What is it that they could do in order to support the Artash Institute for Urban Health? So there are different ways that you can support um, the Institute. I mean, funding is, is a major issue w with the Institute being a nonprofit organization. We really uh, depend on your funding and we depend on your support. And so that's something that's very Im important. Uh, People can also volunteer with the Institute. There are various aspects in which uh, individuals can volunteer. You can volunteer your services at, at the Institute to help uh, in our Health Science Academy, in our, in our offices, at, at our various offices, or within the community when we do community-based research, when we do health promotion. But funding is, is a, a major player, and it's a major way that you can support us. Okay, so my final question to you would be um, we are both you know Guyanese <laughs> and um, the question for all my Guyanese viewers um, would probably want to ask you um, what di how did um, growing up in Guyana help you to you know not necessarily become successful but what role did it play in you you know attaining this level because I, I know you, you're a very humble individual, but this role that you have as the director of the Artash Institute 
is something huge, okay? You have, you have a lot of power, you know? Um, you, you have the power to change lives, and what role do you think being Guyanese played in that, y in your ascension to I this level? So we, with the Guyanese, I think, was our family structure. Uh, our parents really stressed education, and, and it wasn't an option for us to not go to college. That was not an option for us. And so going to college and, 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 and always striving to be better. Mm -hmm. And our parents always talked about being better than they were. And we hope that the other generation will build on what the foundation was said before. And so I think in um, being Guyanese, sometimes one of the things, being an immigrant, I think you come and to the U.S. and you want to make a difference in, in your life and you want to you come to us for a better a better opportunity and you need to take that those opportunities as they come and I think that's with being Guyanese be uh, the work ethics that our parents in instill upon us yeah those were the things that were very um, helpful and faith was a really strong par part of our upbringing and so going to church although sometimes some of us might not have wanted to go but our faith has helped us to to have a strong foundation and to ground us when things sometimes seem as though they're not going the right way. Okay. I did say that that was the last question, but this is the last question, I promise you. Um, finally, where do you, now that you are the elm of the Attached Institute for Urban Health, um, where do you see the institute in the next 10 years? Or five to 10 years? So I see, our, I see the institute expanding its reach. I, I see the institute uh, doing a lot more within the community. I see us um, increasing our depth and our breadth of, in terms of the work that we do. We like to replicate our programs elsewhere, um, outside of Brooklyn, and um, even internationally. We have started doing some of that with a program that we're doing in Trinidad and Tobago with the University of the West Indies there, and I would like to see more of those things happen. So, Dr. Frazier, it's an absolute pleasure um, to talk to you, and I wish you continual success. And um, you know, I, you know, it's just I'm I'm delighted. Okay, I've known this woman. I call her my sister all the time for so many years, and my big sister, not the sister. She don't want to be the because she's not the little sister. She's the big sister. She's my boss. <laughs> so I've known her for a very long time, and I'm very happy for you and I look forward to working with you and look forward for all the great things that the Institute has coming. And I know that you are working hard at it actually. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.